good evening uh, everybody sir so the welcome to the this month's uh, sem subject seminar i think you know can't remember whether you already had a seminar this time um, it is about surgical safety checklist i have asked nikita to both talk about the surgical safety checklist per se and also the process of uh, you know doing the surgical safety checklist so that it is not just a tick box exercise but how much uh, uh, you know all the rules and regulations are being followed the <clears throat> there were lots of avoidable complications which uh, used to happen without the sur surgical safety checklist so it is a, a a log of all the things that happen uh, as the patient is wheeled into the ot you know checked in into the pre prep room and then the patient being wheeled into the ot and all the the anesthetic checkup everything all of these things uh, perform the uh, composition of the surgical safety checklist and at the end of the procedure also so um there the who came up with the idea of having a say, safety checklist so that all the avoidable complications can be you know looked at and then made sure for, for you know by following a, a definite process so nikita please take uh, take away and get uh, you know start your presentation yes sir um so you can hear me right sir uh, yeah yeah good yes. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Nikita, first year surgery resident. Uh, the topic allotted today is a uh, surgical safety checklist. I symbolically try to portray it in the gray area to emphasize its current scenario. About this, I hope you would get a clear picture at the end of the seminar. Here comes the checklist of today's seminar. Initially, I'll talk about how, why, and who created this checklist. Then we will skeletonize the checklist and dissect each component of it in detail. Then after, uh, then after utilization, the result or difference will be talked about. Uh, then we'll throw some light over the studies conducted around this checklist, it imp its implementation and its results. What they convey is more important because that takes us to the limitations and disadvantages of this safety. As ironic as it sounds, this need to be addressed. First, I'll break down the title of the seminar. What can be considered as a surgery? It needs to be, uh, it needs to fulfill the mentioned qualities. Any procedure occurring in the operating room involving incision, excision, manipulation or suturing of tissue that usually requires regional or general anesthesia or profound sedation to control pain. Then what is a checklist? It is job aid used in repetitive tasks, which we do every day, like multiple times, just to reduce the failure rate. Not because we do a task to fail, but uh, to err is to human. Our potentials are limited. Our memory, our attention, they are very limited. So in order to compensate our limits, we need an aid in order to overcome the failure. So let's dig into some history of surgical safety checklist. Though there were many small or big checklists for everything and every anything, we from surgical field took our inspiration uh, to form and use a checklist from aviation. The story goes like uh, when a certain new type of plane was introduced with some extra gears, while it was being tested by an experienced pilot, he forgot to pull up those extra gears which were newly introduced. This resulted in his death and then they mandated to go through a checklist while starting a plane to avoid such horrible incidents. But in our case, we are lucky that we are not at the life and death risk, but using this checklist will decrease such risks to, pay, to the patient. In 2007, WHO started to gather uh, very experienced people all over the world. I mean, experienced medical uh, field professionals Nearly 100 experts all over the world were involved. Uh, they did something like a meta-analysis of all the previous studies related to surgical safety uh, and avoidable accidents, perioperative and intraoperative. They worked together and came up with a surgical safety checklist in 2008. 
A trial run was done in eight hospitals all over the world, including one in Delhi, in order to test the surgical safety checklist effect. Then WHO officially launched a surgical safety checklist in 2009 as a part of Safe Surgery Saves Lives. So the challenge faced by the surgical safety checklist are people don't think that it's a problem. They consider it as a mistakes and they think that mistakes often happen. But the burden of these mistakes is very heavy. Only a very small amount of data is available regarding the safety concern. And that is very masked. No one wants to publish about their hospital mistakes, keeping in mind about the reputation of hospital and the staff. Even there are any existing uh, safety practices, people don't use them effectively. And uh, most of the time they think that it's very complex to follow such safety procedures and it's very cumbersome. So by facing these challenges and overcoming them, we want to reach to a desired state, the goal. Here, our goal is so simple that uh, we just want to define a set of standards of, of safety measures which can be implemented all over the world in all the countries without any difficulty. So our uh, goal includes four topics, the teamwork of all the professionals involved in a surgery and the safe, safe anesthetic uh, procedures and prevention of surgical site infections and measurement of surgical services. So uh, let, let the checklist begin. Our staff are diligent and spontaneous. We need to keep in mind that we are discussing about all the surgeons all over the world. So the generalization gives us a simple no, surgeon and they get distracted by dramatic presentations of situations. So this checklist helps to stick to the basic safety measures in order to minimize those mistakes caused by the distractions. The established framework of a safe intraoperative care in hospitals involves routine sequence of events, preoperative evaluation of patients, surgical intervention, and preparation of appropriate postoperative care with specific risks that can be mitigated. So uh, here we divide it into three phases, anesthetic phase, operative phase, and postoperative phase. The surgical safety checklist launched by WHO has as you can see here, it has uh, it has to be divided into three parts. There are three phases demarcated by induction, incision, and exit. So before induction, we call it as sign-in. And before incision, we call it as time-out. And before leaving the operative room, we call it as sign-out. And this is our hospital surgical safety checklist. Uh, as you can see, these three people at the top of the uh, top of the heading, these are the three main people who are responsible for anything and everything that happens inside the operation theater. So we'll talk about uh, those three at the uh, in, in the following slides. We did a little customization here. Uh, we uh, which is absolutely accepted and encouraged by WHO. We included these extra boxes just to make our uh, checklist a little more handy. Let's discuss about each component in detail. The first, uh, okay, the basic, the three principles of the checklist are, it's as simple as it can be implemented and can be used anywhere and can be measured. So uh, we can just calculate like how many checks have been done in each component in order to measure the utilization of the checklist. So these are the three principles of the checklist. The first component of the sign-in is about the identity of the patient and part of the surgery which we are going to operate. The first and foremost and important thing is to confirm patient identity. They, uh, these have to be... Uh, this have to be done very uh, cautious, I mean, very cautiously. There are many un unapologetic, un apologetic. Apologetic, unapologetic <laughs> cases where a wrong patient is operated. 
so we'll start by asking patient his name after making him um, making sure to tell him that this is a part of surgical procedure and please do answer comfortably because without informing uh, about the checklist if you just directly ask him what is your name and who are you and where are you he, uh, the patient responds in an uh, anxious manner and it is uh, not a good thing preoperatively or postoperatively sight and uh, sight are most important as they are most common mistakes resulting in grave morbidity and mortality mostly occur in orthopedic surgeon uh, surgeries and onco surgeries where the lesions are not seen on the outside so that we can't pinpointly know where we are going to operate and legally it's worst kind of medical negligence as your intentions and cover ups don't matter as the mistake speaks for themselves and wrong side surgeries can change your sight from this side of the doctor's table to the other side of your doctor's table so uh, this is the de descending order in which the mistakes occur depending upon wrong side wrong sight wrong procedure and wrong patient consent is the most commonest word which, which which has complex repercussions we casually use the term written and informed consent but how will we inform we are not sure about it it's it's a basic ethics to inform a patient what we are doing and what all gonna what all things are going to happen because of our action if we don't tell something and we do it and if we don't tell uh, something and it happens then we are legally drowned it is is it mandatory to take a consent or is it just a hospital formality or a tradition or just a safety side for uh, if something goes wrong it's actually a right right of a patient to know what is being done as the title states the consent is not a form but a process of explaining procedure to the patient clearing his doubts educating about the complications that could occur and how we are going to tackle them it is most important because we just can't uh, tell him that there is a complication which is going to occur and just leave the matter there we need to explain him that those complications can also be taken care of in a proper manner and how this uh, some other important things that consent are the other points about the consent are a doctor needs to be there yeah, i just can't fill a consent form sign it myself and send it to the patient and ask him to read and sign it we both need to be there while the consent form is being filled and each procedure and for each procedure done to a patient it requires a separate consent the concept of blanket consent which says the doctor can do whatever on me is invalid and the consent always need to be taken prior Uh, as the title mentions it's prior informed consent not a regular consent now it needs to be taken prior uh, not during a process and if we repeat any process we need to take the consent again uh, in our setting we usually take uh, consent which uh, which is valid for 24 hours and uh, do uh, nikita nikita I, yes sir nikita i'm sorry to interrupt you but we are talking about the safety checklist and consent is a complete topic by itself so i was just wondering what was your uh, motivation or idea in spending so much time on consent uh, sir uh... So if i may gently suggest just, just checking, the... checking the yeah. consent is important in your checklist okay Yes, let us let us focus on the checklist please okay sir okay so that's the thing you you do, you know I, i think it is important to know that consent is important that's all yes sir yeah carry on okay. nay one second sir sir just yeah. one just a second sir this uh, con consent should be taken uh, by surgeon as well as anesthetist that point has to be stressed yeah. sir so here she has written their surgery yeah. and anesthesia support. yeah yeah both of them because most of us feel that we it's only surgeon should take consent no even anesthesia should take, take talk to them and take consent okay. yeah go ahead madam 
uh, yes sir and uh, uh, this is an extra customized bo customized box in our surgical checklist uh, which is just to give the overall picture of patient status and his blood group if uh, in case any urgent transfusion is required uh, next is about site marking is a very important component of uh, surgical safety checklist it's simple and effective measure and mostly relevant in unilateral uh, sites and multiple sites and if it multiple levels as in the case of uh, vertebral vertebral mm, vertebral surgeries and uh, we need to draw a relevant shape or we need to sign the uh, site using a cross mark is not encouraged as it infers as a site which is not to be touched or not to be done uh, so when to do the marking of the site is important because it needs to be done before shifting to ot while the patient is conscious awake and aware and he uh, with his consent we need to do the marking and it's not applicable not applicable in the case of midline uh, midline surgeries and case of pregnancies commonly so marking the incision site with a permanent marker it was uh, it was kind of mandatory and it was called a site so uh, anesthesia checklist is altogether different we just make sure that whether it has been followed or not, which includes uh, about the airway and the equipment and also the emergency requirements in case of emergency are, are all the things required available or not pulse oximeter uh, one of the bare minimum required thing for monitoring a patient so this is the only technically uh, technical thing which has been included in the surgical safety checklist so uh, we do have we do have high end equipment in our uh, uh, hospital but in rural setting having a pulse oxy itself is a great safety measure and uh, uh, so we can't always rely on the electric equipment and in the case of power in, in the case of power cut we just need to monitor patient with a portable pulse oxy pulse oximeter the next component of the checklist is allergy uh, about allergy is important because it might land the patient in anaphylactic shock it can also happen if the medication errors like omission giving a wrong medic uh, not giving a required medication or a repetition giving a same medication again or giving uh, another medication in the case of required medication or incorrect dose rate or route of medication these all can also land the patient in an adverse reaction which can present as an anaphylactic reaction so these can be prevented by taking a proper history of the patient and documenting if any allergy is present and the medical uh, medical errors can be minimized by color coding the medications and uh, categorizing the look alike and sound alike drugs and the anesthetist who is going uh, who is going to administer the medications he he is supposed to label the medications so it minimizes the uh, mistakes airway assessment is an uh, airway assessment is an important component it is uh, it again lands with the anesthetist history medical conditions like sleep apnea asthma and previous difficulties with anesthesia need to be noted in the case of obesity neck uh, short neck and lack of mobility jaw residing some loose dentitions these all needs to be uh, particularly assessed but during the pre anesthetic checkup and also during uh, on the on table thyromental distance and malampatty classification are most uh, commonly used uh, evaluation techniques for airway assessment uh, to know if there is any difficulty in the airway aspiration is a, a common risk and it can be uh, due to non uh, non fasting patient obesity a difficult airway or a difficulty in intubation sleeping in trendelenburg position with inflated abdomen as in uh, pregnancy and previous gastric surgeries 
so it can be minimized by decompressing the uh, stomach by introducing a uh, rail tube induction and intubation in a rapid succession manner with pre oxygenation and cricoid pressure so uh, blood loss is a uh, one of the uh, important component in the checklist because anticipating the blood loss and being prepared for a blood loss uh, decreases the uh, morbidity and uh, mortality in the case of on table surgical emergencies so hypovolemia is most common because of blood loss and uh, placement of adequate intravenous assets and products before skin is before skin incision is important uh, if the patient has any coagulation defects, it needs to be corrected prior to surgery. And uh, blood loss greater than 500 ml for adult or uh, greater than uh, 7 ml per kg in children, we need to immediately start, uh, we need to introduce to white bone needles and uh, prepare for resuscitation. In the case of damage control surgeries, the packing of abdomen is done. Uh, in order to prevent the blood loss and re-exploration is done 24 to 72 hours after the uh, packing. So, time out or a surgical pass. Just a minute, ma'am. Yes, sir. Any questions so far? Anybody? Any clarifications? Uh, where do you expect uh, blood loss? Say, give some examples. For example, this case, sir, I will arrange definitely for blood. Sir, uh, in the case, uh, uh. in the cases where we are doing surgeries very close to the uh, greater vessel, sir. No, give some uh, some post -day. This one OT you have posted, and you want to arrange blood in the safety of patients, not surgical steps. Any any surgery names you. Where you will arrange blood? Nikita, if you Sir, don't know, say don't know. Uh, I'm not, uh, I can't exactly answer a surgery, sir. Guess, ma, what are the major operations that you would have seen in the last two, three months? Or yeah. where have you seen people arrange blood? In your setup only, where all you had arranged blood in the past three months or so? Sir, Did... we have uh, arranged generally on the basis of... Uh, uh, low hemoglobin, sir. Just name, name and operation. Name surgery, ma. Have you arranged blood for hernia repair? No, sir. No, where have you arranged blood? For thyroid surgery, do you need to arrange blood? Yes, sir. We. You do? No, that was pre, you know, Theodore Cocker. Do you need? Did you arrange in last three months any time any for any patient blood, madam, before pre before surgery? Uh, sir, Forget in... about pre op hemoglobin. Just we are talking about which surgeries do we need to arrange blood? Pavan, sir, uh, in major laparotomy, sir, uh, like uh, gastrointestinal bleeding, just and in pelvic surgeries like a uh, hysterectomy, sir. Do you routinely arrange blood for hysterectomies? Uh, no, sir. Um, like uh, um, uh, pan hysterectomy with the um, uh, lymph nodal dissection. Verdimes. Uh, Verdimes. Okay. Okay. And uh, when we are expecting more blood, sir. And at the same time, in case of uh, um, uh, thoracotomy procedure, sir. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you do it for a hepatectomy? For a Whipple's? For a retroperitoneal yes, dissection? Yes, sir. Yeah. What why is don't the, you mention that? Why don't you mention this? Mm. Yes, sir, uh, I'm t uh, that is, sir, a uh, major laparotomy is like, Anta, I'm going no, to no, tell no, the examples. Question, uh, question from Nuli, sir, was very specific. Okay. Name okay. the operations where you would where okay. you would cross-match blood. Okay, that was a very specific question. Yeah. See, the, why that is important is you should know, you know where do you anticipate blood loss and also in certain situations, the surgeon gets irritated if you arrange blood. Like one of the intern had arranged three units of blood for a DJ vagotomy. <laughs> <laughs> so the surgeon was very upset. Okay. 
and uh, and about identity also we should be very specific especially on your south side sir there will be three or four geetas will be admitted on the same day and uh, some geeta will be taken into the ot so identity of the name that also creates a yeah. lot of uh, uh, this concern identity of the patient name yeah, should be very specific she has, she has very specific mentioned that first yeah. is the name very nice then it is the, yeah. yeah okay Correct, sir. any 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 other clarifications sir anybody else any questions Hello? class sir i have ah. a question yeah yeah sir in emergency situations where a patient is not able to give the history then ah. what we have to do sir during the sign in procedure in emergency uh, situations i think where, uh, yes, hmm. so you you have to involve uh, a patient's relative to check all the credentials of the patient because patient wouldn't probably be if at all is you know very drowsy or you know if he is very ill then you will have to involve a relative only to check the credentials of the patient that is the name and age of the patient and all these details and the rest of it you have to you know ensure by the case sheet being properly documented the consent to being taken properly and all these things only to check the credentials of the patient you will have to involve a relative uh, lakshman sir i would agree with that the sign in part of it will suffer if the patient is extremely ill with sepsis not compus mentis or has problems like a head injury where patient is comatose or not, or disoriented so what you have to do is get the history part of it like allergy previous medication and things like that from the patients document it in the case sheet and as uh, ravi has mentioned you have to depend on a well documented case sheet to get these details and for and if the patient cannot even identify who or who or uh, who he or she is then you know we have this idea of a arm band a wrist band where you have the identity of the patient that has to be double checked yes. by the yes, nurses sir. and the surgeon and make sure that that is pro the proper patient is on the table so these are exceptions where the patient is not compus mentis and sign in has to be done but in a slightly different way okay. not depending on the patient's input okay sir. yeah okay. right um, any other questions abdul okay abdul, abdul are you there nothing to add okay right carry on ma yes sir uh, even in the instructions of surgical safety checklist they mentioned that uh, involving a attender during a normal sign in is uh, encouraged sir yeah that's what i said it's only you know the important thing is these things have to be documented well in advance either in the emergency room if the patient is being shifted from emergency directly to the operating theater or from in the ward and make sure all the, the necessary documentation is done there but if you when you come to the sign in you you know have a name label on the patient check that double check it and then maybe involve the, one of the relatives just to confirm the patient's name age and the, you know the the all these uh, generic data about the patient the rest of it you have to you know depend on the a properly written uh, documented case list ca case history and the consent form okay yes sir uh, carry on now. the time out or a surgical pass it is a brief less than 1 minute pass in a operating room activity Im uh, immediately before the incision at which time all the members of the operating team surgeon anesthetist nurses and anyone else involved verbally confirm the identity of the patient the operative site and the procedure to be performed so there is also a uh, other thing called as extended pass pause in which uh, the three uh, the three professionals involved they discuss about the case in an extensive manner so uh, the three professionals surgeon anesthetist and nurse they three of them need to know the patient site procedure and uh, patient site and procedure so they all need to confirm these three things so everyone knows everything which is required the basic minimum which is required as a surgeon uh, we need to anticipate 
uh, we need to express our thought about the unusual event that might occur in this particular case and about the blood loss. Uh, anesthetist should say about any specific trouble they are, they are having or any difficulty in intubation or airway management. And nurse should speak up about the concerns like breach of sterility and malfunction of equipment. There is a one study which says that the surgical pause may uh, initiates the uh, speak uh, speaking up of the nurses so that uh, during the process if they are having any trouble it makes them it uh, hesitate a little less than the normal situations so that uh, it increases the communication between the uh, surgeon anesthetist and the nurse prophylactic antimicrobial do we need to give it in all the cases Ideally, as per my knowledge, it is only uh, required if there is a contamination or a breach of body flora. Generally, we give it 60 minutes before the incision. So, there are some special conditions uh, which the WHO has a uh, special mention about uh, subacute bacterial endocarditis. Do they need any special prophylactic measures? Oh, only in the case of uh, wall, uh, artificial walls and uh, when the patient is having some uh, constitutional uh, infection like upper respiratory tract infection or uh, gastric gastrointestinal in infection, they need a prophylactic antibiotic. And C-section uh, with respect to WHO measures of pregnancy and children, these two conditions, they require prophylactic antibiotics because of increased surgical site infection. Redosing is generally done four hours uh, if the surgery extends more than four hours or there is any excessive bleeding. In the case of use of Nikita, vancomycin... Nikita, sir? Yes, let sir. me interrupt you again. See, we have had a whole section or talk on surgical site infections. Here, your focus is to say in a surgical checklist, you make sure that the yeah. prophylactic antibiotic as is specified in your uh, protocol is followed or not. Yes, sir. You understand? Redosing, what compound you use, all that is not required not here required. in this particular discussion. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Not. Yes, yeah. sir. The, uh, the ro role of surgical checklist is to make sure that the prophylactic antibiotic is given if it is required to be given and is according to the protocol. Okay. Given or not, you just check. Yeah, that's just it. check that. Okay. That's all that's required. Go to the next one. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, imaging display. I don't think it is regularly followed in most of the settings, but uh, it's one of the most important components because it increases the visualization of the surgeon so that uh, it minimizes the mistakes that could have occurred. Uh, sign out. It Nikita, starts with the... Nikita, I have to interrupt you there again. Yes, sir. Uh, is image display required in every case? So, uh, in relevant uh, cases only, sir. Yeah, that is an important thing. So it is not missed out at all. I'm sure in most of our practice, I know in Sagar or in our practice, it is not... Uh, missed out if it's required. So I would not need an image or a report of a gallstone hung on in the OT anywhere. But if I have a situation where I suspect a mirizis or I suspect a difficult gallbladder dissection, I probably would have had an MRI beforehand and I would definitely ask for it to be shown. You do not need a, an image display for a hernia, for example. But if you're doing, as you showed in these pictures, uh, a vertebral fusion okay you would like to know which segments of the vertebra had to be fused so you would like to have the image there things like that okay yes. so uh, we do not miss out imaging display as you normally mentioned but yes if you have a ct if you have an x-ray or an mri which is not required for every single general surgical case if it is required for a relevant case it would be displayed okay, okay. all right please pro proceed yeah uh, Madam, you have written here uh, post-op management. What is it? Sir? Yeah, he you have written this... here post-op management. Explain, I think she'll explain. Uh, oh. I will. I will... Okay, okay. Oh, yes, sir. Go. Oh. 
uh, sign out starts with nurse confirming the procedure again ensuring that uh, and ensuring the count of instruments and surgeon and anesthetist discussing about the post op management so instruments and sponges uh, manual counting methods are not foolproof a new methods such as barcoded and radio frequency tags for the sponges and uh, gauze pieces are uh, being followed now counting needs to be done by two persons uh, two nurses or uh, two technicians it needs to be viewed and audibly counted concurrently wound exploration before closure is most important thing to prevent uh, foreign body leaving inside the surgical site um, sur surgical cavity cavity specimen mislabeling has very severe consequences patient taking a leap of faith and surgeon ex executing his marvelous skills all this goes into ruins if the specimen extracted is not labeled properly the purpose of the surgery is completely lost in these cases so it is surgeon's responsibility to fill the requisition form label the specimen correctly as per the uh, uh, correlating with the requisition form and uh, pre presenting its orientation is also equally important for proper uh proper study of the specimen pathological reporting ma pa proper pathological reporting okay post op management all the instructions regarding the post op care need to be given before leaving uh, before the patient leaving the operation um, operating room uh, such as uh, any other uh, other than the normal uh, post op orders any drain care foley's or extra the pain management should be discussed with anesthetist like is there any requirement of uh, infusion or uh, of local uh, infiltration of anesthesia or any epidural management uh, uh, in in okay requirement of uh, intensive care should be evaluated before shifting out of the operating room so uh, this box is our uh, in our hospital we do have this box it documents the people responsible for life saving surgery and breathtaking mistakes all this check box needs to be implemented or run by a single person it could be anyone in the operating room but most probably it is assigned to a circulating nurse uh, before uh, it is run as uh, we have expl uh, as we have seen in a stepwise manner and most commonly the time taken for an uh, checklist is under 2 minutes so the results of the checklist are on various studies they show approximately of 30% decrease in morbidity and mortality rates prior to the use of uh, comparing prior to the use of surgical safety checklist the compliance will decrease from phase 1 to phase 3 as per the results. In phase 1, the, uh, uh, the professionals are more involved in the surgical safety checklist. They, uh, they, they, they go through all the checkboxes, but as the phase increases, they are more involved in the surgery and less involved in the checklist. Communicate, uh, but application or implementation of these checklists increases the increase the communication between the professionals that is surgeon anesthetist and the nurse which uh, uh, effectively decrease the mistake rate introduction and implementation are two different terms in just introducing a checklist doesn't give the results the proper implementation of the checklist is need to be uh, addressed there are many studies done from 2009 to 2023, but uh, I would like to mention a few of them. In 2002, Germa et al., uh, uh, Germa and others, the study showed that in, a, uh, in the 20 cases which were done from morning to evening, the first case has the more compliance than the last case, and the senior uh, surgeons were more uh, involved in uh, in running a checklist than the junior residents. And in emergency cases, the checklist was more used than in elective cases. 
in 2021 jejong and others study showed that uh, the workload factor is a major limitation or a major uh, draw, um, back cause cause uh, cause uh, cause to not to i mean to for the decreased compliance of the surgical safety checklist and there is very uh, time out uh, rates because they are not uh, compliant to do the surgical pause and most of the cases surgeon leaves the or immediately after finishing the surgery uh, not waiting uh, till the sign out phase of the surgical safety checklist in 2019 osnor et al study showed that or it was uh, mostly about the uh, operating room nurse perspectives on the surgical safety checklist most of them were aware of the checklist and had the positive opinion but they um, but they answered that it was uh, very low uh, implementation was low the implementation was low and in our hospital uh, our uh, uh, registrar dr abdul sir has conducted a study to study uh, on the attitudes and utilization of surgical safety checklist and sir study uh, showed that time out and sign out have the least compliances and uh, nurses need uh, were in need of sterility counseling those were the two important points uh, madam where where did you get these articles you have put only authors names journal or book or what are these sir uh, i do have them sir uh, i'll just put in the chat box sir okay 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 here yes, also you should, if you could have put some journal names it's okay, okay yes sir okay. Okay. okay i think we'll uh, stop here for the time being abdul just take some time out 5 minutes talk about what you did what was your uh, you know it, what is it called what did you do quickly sir uh, we did a study uh, last year and uh, it was not about uh, audit as such it was a process of conducting an audit where they were independent observers who who watched how the entire process of conduction uh, who who takes the uh, surgical safety checklist who calls out the name who checks the sign out everything was observed by two independent observers and then based on that we found out that the the compliance was the least in the time out and the sign out group as well as the doctors sign post uh, on that surgical safety checklist was also inefficient sir the main consultant sign in that so the, this is what we had seen uh, so we observed in our study so what was the compliance regarding most of the major uh, aspects that is the consent form the sign no. the, the patient's name And that was the... there, sir. Almost eighty to ninety percent. That was uh, compliance was there. Only thing which we were not compliant was in the sign out group, sir. Post op, like uh, just 80, before the list. Eighty to ninety percent is not enough, man. You need yes. to have hundred percent compliance as far as side of the size side, side of the surgery consent form, and then the the, the you know uh, operate the you know the anesthetist talking about the difficult intubation, mm -hmm. surgeon arranging for the blood. all these things should be 100% was it yes. 100% or not no it was not 100% how much was it uh, sir around uh, exact figure i'll just let you know sir actually i told nikita to tell you so that you will be prepared with these things because you know you had done a process audit on the surgical safety checklist no yes sir okay i think sir, what I have... you should do what you should do is to share those details you know in the uh, our group in the whatsapp group yes sir later okay right carry so on 94% it was the identity and 94 to 95% was the identity and the site of surgery compliance ah. was seen and ah. 100% compliance was seen in uh, consent for the procedure and the procedure being appropriately worded hmm. site of surgery marking was seen only in 64% but not everyone needs to be marked anyway yes sir and so uh, no, excluding that sir or uh -huh. out of those who required marking in that only 64% were okay okay uh, mm. needed and uh, i his known history of allergies and of ass in 92 to 92% sir compliance okay and the anesthesia the safety checklist was completed as well as announced in 72% 
of the okay. patient. Okay. Final and, uh, measurement count and yes, sir. Just before we make the incision, the members at the time where uh, all members were present only in seventy nine percent of the time, sir. Okay. Time out and uh, instrument uh, antibi antibiotic prophylaxis. We had ninety seven percent compliance. Okay. And uh, post op in doing sign out instrument count needle count was recorded in ninety nine percent. Okay. Abdul, uh, sign out, uh, you are telling just 79%. Uh, sign out, why 79%? Any cause for that? No, uh, no, sign out as such, I'm not telling 79, sir. It's like individual markers we have taken the compliance. Individual True. parameters. 79%, why it is uh, less, I'm asking. Anything where we can rectify something and uh, raise it up. Abdul, no, sir, I said time, Abdul, time. Abdul, in which yes, component sir. of sign out was 79%? No, sir. In timeout, it was 79%. Time That's out, what you would not in sign out. In sign out, the out, overall mean compliance was 88%. Sir. 88, okay. What exactly you mean by sign out, Abdul? After the procedure is done, whether okay. the name of the procedure is recorded in the thing, whether the hmm. sister uh, has yeah. uh, mentioned that. That all, that all will be done, no, Abdul, usually. Yeah, that is all done, sir. And in that mm. one component was the checklist has to be signed by the chief surgeon at the ah. end of sign out. In that, okay. the compliance was 54%. So the total oh. mean compliance became 88 because only because of that. Otherwise, the rest of the parameters had 99% compliance. Uh, listen, uh, Abdul, what is the thing is, unless the checklist is signed, the patient is not shifted out of the OT. Yes, sir. All the people who are involved, including the sister, assistant, surgeon, anesthetist, all the team members have to sign on that paper, checklist paper. Then only yes. paper, a patient is shifted from the OT. So how yes, can sir. how come the surgeon won't sign on that paper when he operates and he just goes off? No. No, 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 sir. Actually, hmm? usually the assistant they sign it, sir. The no, 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 sorry. No. I'm sorry. I yes, won't sir. agree with that. No, no. I, the main surgeon should sign. So yes. that's what we found in our study that only 54% was uh, compliance was seen. Uh, the checklist being signed by the chief surgeon. No, Abdul, I'm sorry, I'm upset. So, but that is the sir, honest... that is that is an honest reality in that institution that will be addressed. Sir. That is the purpose of the audit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's the purpose Better of the audit. Should sign. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Go on, uh, go on uh, Nikita. Yes, sir. Continue. Nikita, this yes, uh, you were talking about the count, you know. When the foreign bodies are left in the abdomen, what is the term used? Gossipy bilomas, sir. Huh? Gossip iboma. Gossip iboma. So, you were, you were telling about the, because this is a major concern about the count of the instruments and uh, sponges used, okay? Yes, sir. So what what is the best method is what we do is for every surgery we attach checklist for sponges and instruments, including towel clips, whatever you use. And take it again after again you check it after the surgery. Different hospitals, different things. Some people write on a blackboard on the wall of the OT, like that. Because this is a major mistake we do. Either we leave a sponge or an instrument, something like that. most of the time it is sponge. Nikita, yes, just sir. for a clarification, gossip boma refers only to sponges, something Sponge. related to mm -hmm. cotton. cotton. Yes. Okay, if yes. you leave an artery forceps behind, it is an artery forceps left behind, not gossip boma. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Go on. And Are other you... and other thing, Nikita, is that whenever you have packed the abdomen, for example, or packed a wound, you have to record the number of uh, this one yes. that is packed. So that when the person takes it out next, he is aware that how many packs are left behind. You bring right. the patient back to the OT. Again, the person who is doing the operation should know how many packs were there. So again, that has to be recorded both in the surgical safety checklist and in the operating note. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, is there any term, sir, for uh, like any foreign body we leave in the uh, no, no, cavity? No term. No, no. term. No term. Okay. So, uh, the limitations and uh, 
disadvantages of the surgical safety checklist. Limitation being the attitude of the surgeon. Uh, most of the surgeons, they're like, the, uh, the checklist is not required. We can perform the surgery in a uh, well-efficient manner. But no, no. I don't think that is the case. It used to be probably. I think all the surgeons are compliant with the safety checklist because they know that it is for their own good. I don't think there is anybody who says I am above all these things. I have not met any surgeon like that. Ravi, she is uh, giving quotation from the article in recent advances. So uh -huh. That's one of the things mentioned there. Yeah. Okay. It okay. may not be in our circles. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Yes, I agree with your statement, sir. But personally, I uh, I also don't see, sir. But that I, is I, the result of the study, sir. No, no, you are right. I think the surgeons used to be like that. Surgeons, uh, they always said, what is difference between surgeon and God? They would say that surgeon doesn't think he is a God. Sorry, that God doesn't think he is a surgeon. God, but surgeon, <laughs> <laughs> correct. <laughs> correct. So, I agree. But I think I, what I, you know, I agree with you, it is a part of the study, but the attitudes are changing. I think surgeons are becoming more compliant with the thing. But still and they are, have to, sir. And they have to. They have to, but still hmm. there may be, there may be attitude, people think that they are above these things. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, most of the time, surgical safety checklist in increases the ang uh, anxiety of the patient uh, with prior uh, uh, information that we are going to perform a checklist, it will uh, subside. Not assigning one person to do the checklist, it is one of the major drawbacks because uh, most of the thing, um, uh, most of the times what happens, uh, one, one nurse thinks that the other one is going to do it and the, the uh, nurse thinks that a clinician is going to do it. At the end, none of them uh, do it and the, uh, the procedure has already begun. So, in that cases, assigning one person to a procedure is a, one of the best thing to tackle the limitation. Lack of resources. In our hospital, we have like, plenty of checklist and uh, equipment and ample staff to do. But in most of the places, uh, the resources are very limited. That, so, that is one of the limitations. How do you I, reduce the anxiety of patients, Nikita? So with prior counseling, sir, uh, hmm. uh, that you? this is a important part of the OT procedure, and we are going to ask Nikita. you. Him, we are doing for Nikita. him. We are doing, sir. Nikita, Nikita, you have you have seen me do a safety checklist in my OT. Yes, sir. What do we do? Just explain what we do. Sir, uh, we just tell her that I know everything about you, but yeah. uh, just for the sake of. Uh, uh, a formality in the checklist and the requirement not the just a formality i say this is a requirement requirement for the yes. safety of your operation that is why we're going to ask again please don't yes, worry about this we know everything and then start off okay yes sir yeah yeah okay and go on time constraint okay. in the case of a very uh, high workload areas uh, that is a major limitation and too many surgeries and there is a checklist fatigue where the staff don't uh, com comply to the finish of the checklist. Yeah, Would you agree with that, that one can perhaps ignore the checklist if there are too many surgeries? No, sir. Yeah, uh, it is all I the more agree, important. But... To, yeah, when you have all the more, it's all the more important that you are do your checklist more carefully more diligently when you have yes. many operations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, but sir. I know, as I said earlier, I know that this is one of the things that has been mentioned in this paper. Yeah, go on. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, there are some other checklists which were previously used. Uh, that One of them is Joint Commission Universal Protocol and uh, Surpass Checklist, which is Surgical uh, Patient uh, Safety Checklist, which, which involves from the uh, admission of the patient to the discharge of the patient and I am for safety checklist. So the takeaway message from to, today's seminar is the checklist should be understood not merely as a list of items that need to be checked off but as an instrument for improvement of communication, teamwork and safety culture in the operating room and it should be implemented accordingly. Very good. Oh, this this is your message or is it taken from somewhere? So it was a part of the instructions of WHO surgical safety checklist, sir. 
Okay, but I thought you had actually coined it. If it had, it was very good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, comments from uh, Pooja. What do you think of the topic, and what do you think of her presentation? Sir, uh, she has actually highlighted the exact mistakes we make. <laughs> that is, she has skeletonized it so well, and she has broken down each component. And uh, actually, to be very honest, we we lack uh, in doing it properly. I think, sir. So henceforth, we will be doing it uh, in like in proper uh, in a proper way. And uh, regarding her presentation, I think she has done a great job. It is a it was very concise, and she has explained it very well, sir. Okay. Indraja or Pawan, one of you. It's a nice presentation, sir. And the surgical safety checklist, it is very important to us. Um, most of the times, uh, like, uh, we will just fill the bo boxes. So we should not. We should explain everything to the patient and to the anesthetist, and we have to discuss with the nurses, sir. That is more important while doing the checklist. That we are missing somehow. That's okay. what I thought. Yes. What, is, what do you think of her presentation? Her presentation is very good, sir. She explained everything very clearly and she is not reading out of the slides. Okay, yes. good. Uh, Noli, sir, you are... Uh... Uh, sir, one more. Uh, uh, this one we had is about the equipment, sir. Uh, I think it is must be there in the list also. I didn't see it. Uh, at the end of the surgery, anything to be done about the, some of the equipments or instruments, anything in the OP uh, for their improvement is needed. That also one point is added in the WHO checklist, sir. Uh, that is one thing I wanted to tell. And her uh, presentation is very good, sir. Very uh, nice. Well, I, I didn't very understand good. what about in instrument or equipment, sir. Ravi, Ravi I mentioned Ravi. anything that's not working. For example, if the cautery is not uh -huh. working. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. that has, that's right. We, we do it routinely, sir. It is yeah, a yeah. checklist yes, sir, and yeah. we do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is there in the third part of that uh, checklist. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, uh, uh, but for the benefit of uh, uh, this one, sir, post graduates, why this all erupted is uh, that great actress, uh, Sri Devi's mother, uh, underwent a brain surgery in US and uh, a wrong uh, side of the uh, skull cavity was uh, explored, sir. That's what uh, was a big news in those days. Uh, so this really helps, sir. I'll tell you whether it is urban or rural setup, this checklist definitely helps and we should practice this. Is very good uh, point. Okay. Uh, we should follow it. And she presented it very well, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Lakshman, sir. Yeah, I have a few comments to make, so I'll request some five minutes from the chairperson. I think uh, the creativity and the enthusiasm you showed in the beginning, uh, Nikita, I think was very good. I like the gray area and the gray design of the slide. You got your definitions out very well. Your presentation was very crisp and very good. Of course, the flow lacked in a little in a few places and i'm sure with your uh, uh you know with time and a few more presentations that will also get uh, corrected but i do believe that if you talk about a surgical safety checklist without talking about atul gawande it would be uh, an incomplete presentation yes sir yes sir atul, atul gawande, gawande is a yes. surgeon of indian origin Okay, son of a urologist who emigrated, Indian urologist who emigrated to the U.S. Of course, he was born and brought up there. Works at Harvard, and his work was instrumental in inspiring WHO to bring this uh, checklist. And he was the prime mover for the eight centers that did the preliminary study, which showed you mentioned a thirty percent improvement in morbidity and mortality. There is a correction there. It is 30% improve, improvement in mortality and a 60% improvement in morbidity. All right. Double the number of mortality. So it's a huge improvement that you have when you institute a surgical che safety checklist. So I think we should have a picture of Atul Gawande in all the things that we talk about. And he's written a book called Surgical Manifesto. No, not surgical. Some other manifesto. Checklist Manifesto, not surgical. It's called Two checklist. books, sir. Two books are there. Yeah. Checklist Manifesto. It's a must read for all our residents. You will see what a nice uh, reading it is. It, it, it flows very well and it tells you the philosophy of a checklist. Please read it. Next, you talked about customization of our, our safety checklist. 
that came out of a requirement for NABH. Okay. So when we found, you perhaps don't know because it happened before your time. Uh, but what happened was that we did an audit of the things that of our uh, discharge summaries and our case sheets, which required to have a few things, a few items, and some of them were missing. And so instead of having to uh, put it down as a separate thing in a case sheet, we added those four items into the checklist itself so that uh, we will get a comprehensive information documented in the case sheet as we move along in our documentation. All right, you, you mentioned one thing about site marking, marking the incision. All right, the, I, it may lead to confusion, but the, in, the, the point there is if you use an indelible marker, you, you may misconstrue, you may wrongly think that you should use a, a, uh, an indelible marker where you put your incision. That is incorrect. Okay. If you use an indelible marker and you cut down on it, there can be a tattoo. Those pigments can get into the dermis and you can have permanent marking or dots or spots in that incision. So it must clearly indicate the side of the incision, side of the surgery, but should not be overlapping on the actual incision. And it should also be easily seen. You do not have to strip the patient completely before you see the incision. So perhaps if you have a left-sided hernia, having an incision pointing downwards in the left costal margin would be okay. Or pointing upwards in the left upper thigh would be okay. That's a general kind of indication. And as you rightly mentioned, uh, it should be done in the ward before the patient is shifted to a shifted to the operation theater now in the time out you mentioned about uh, everybody all the the team knowing uh, what the operation is that's good because when they announce what the operation is everybody will know but what is more important there are two or three things which are important in a time out which has been mentioned uh, uh, in the in many papers on surgical safety checklist one of them is mutual introduction if you are a small hospital the same one or two nurses will scrub up for you but if you are a large hospital where there is a large turnover a completely strange nurse will be your scrub nurse an equally strange nurse will be your uh, circulating nurse so the team must know each other that's when they can communicate that's how they can communicate so it is important for mutual introduction. You must know who you are, who your assistant is, who your scrub nurse is, who your anesthetist is, and who your uh, circulating nurse is. So mutual introduction is very important. And the other thing that the surgeon has to say, even before he puts an incision, is the possible need for special instruments if required. If you find that you need a non-crushing clamp, bowel clamps, you must mention about it. If you need vascular clamps to be kept, kept ready, you must mention about it. If you need any special sutures that is to be kept ready for a given operation, that has to be mentioned in the phase of timeout. And another thing which is not mentioned and which is, which is very important, which is not a part of an official recommendation, but which is highly recommended and is spoken about in, an, in a different context in uh, relation to operations is the encouragement of a flat system. No hierarchy. The surgeon should not think that he should not be spoken to by his assistant or even by his scrub nurse. The team must work as a team. There should be no hierarchy. And if, if, if somebody feels that the surgeon is omitting something or doing something which can potentially harm the patient, the whole team ha ca must have the freedom and have that kind of ambience or atmosphere to point it out because in that situation, the patient safety is much more important than the ego or the position of a patient. Okay, I have two other things to say before I complete. One of the other things you should avoid in your presentation, it was a very good presentation, but to make it an excellent presentation, you should avoid rhetoric and what may sound, you know, dramatic. Like you mentioned at some stage, life-saving life operations can be spoiled by a breathtaking mistake. 
okay you mentioned those those terms when you spoke that kind of you know usage of words should be avoided in a scientific presentation and you also said in another time you know something that was done will be ruined by by something else okay so you have to tone down your words when you use those instead of saying ruined you can use the word negatively impacted very bland i agree not dramatic but it's much more accepted in a scientific presentation than you know dramatic you know huge you, know, you never write a huge hernia you actually mention the size of the hernia it may be bigger than huge but you just mention the size of the hernia you know like that so avoid dramatic words during your presentation and my final final it's actually a question to abdul abdul we should have published this what is happening to the publication please share your raw data and i'll do something about it okay we should really have gone and gone in for publication last year it is a very good study one yes. of its kind which deserves publication please send the raw data to me but i just want to hear from you why what happened to that study after you finished it how many patients have we covered and what is the kind of data we have sir uh, i think we had 130 patients no? all right uh, okay I, i'll send you the raw data please send me the raw data yes. thank you ravi thank you for okay giving me the i time. think uh, majority of the points that i wanted to say i think atul gavande i would probably wouldn't have said but others i wanted to but i think the you know i i appreciate the fact that she wanted to make the you know the point very clear so she used these dramatic things uh, which in a small forum like this you know we accept it but when you are presenting in national and international forums it is better I, to avoid uh, yeah. exactly please note that my aim for you is not a sagar class on zoom my aim for you is addressing 2000 people at harvard <laughs> so i'm know, not even that, joking that's the way we yeah. should aim and aim, that, you know if i i imagine you niketa or abdul or pooja talking to 2000 pe people in american <clears throat> college of surgeons how would you do it that is the way in which i'm trying to give yeah. my comments yeah thank you yes yes sir so, uh, during scientific think... presentation we should avoid such terms sir avoid. that uh, we should agree sir yeah so i think uh, nikita it is a very good effort and you have actually put in a lot of effort cross uh, references and things are good um, uh, the slides were also good i think the points that sir made please take note of that all in all very good presentation and the discussion also was good so i think uh, we probably come to the end of the class uh, one sec uh, ravi i see apurva having been logged in apurva can you get your video and audio on yes sir yeah. apurva was with us for a short time and uh, where is your video i'm not seeing your video apurva uh, yes sir i'm just connecting one connecting. sec yeah she actually was attached to us you know as an observer in shrc and she wanted to do something and so she did a very good study again an audit on let her let her talk about it i don't want to talk about it yeah video has not come up or ah there you are go on tell yes, tell sir. us what you did so uh, it was a single observer study where i spent in the hospital for uh, from morning till uh, evening observing how the uh, discharge has been done as in discharge has a lot of process right from uh, when the uh, surgeon gives the advice of discharge till the patient leaves the hospital and it has various steps and uh, i monitored each step and compared it with the nabh standards and uh, we found out that there was delay with majorly with the uh, insurance and uh, handing over the discharge summaries from the time it was printed to the patients yeah, yeah. that's the body these were the two major findings uh, she is at the moment in the united states trying to get her usmle and get into she joined her husband and she is there trying to get into a residency program but i'm glad to say that that paper has been accepted we just heard today that that paper which the work she did and we nishant and myself Helped her to write it up, and it's been accepted in the IJS. Congratulations, Purva! I just wanted to congratulate you. Okay. Thank you, I sir. Thank you. Let the class know. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations, you, madam. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night.
गुड नाइट थैंक यू गुड नाइट सर